it's okay. How many can be honest? Let's start whacking the devil now, right now. How many can say that you had a hard heart in your life? That you had a hard heart? Raise your hands if you had a hard heart. Okay, God will give you a soft heart. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight we're going to continue the series that I've been on for several weeks now. Nicole, let's first, let's go over the, the, the title of the series. And let's all read together, please. The three virtues in the life of a believer. We've already done number one, which is hope. Number two, faith. And number three, which we're in, is love. Uh, before, I, you know, a lot of Christians, and we know that God is love, and they want to talk about love, talk about love, talk about love. But before we can talk about love and really learn how to love correctly, we need to learn about hope, which we've learned already. We've learned about faith, which is so important because without hope, without faith, you're not going to be able to love the way God wants us and expects us to love and commands us to love in Jesus' name. Amen? So our, our, our foundational scripture for this series is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, from the TPT, the Passion Translation Bible. And let's all read it together, please. Ready? Let's read. Until then, there are three... Wait, can we all read together, please? Ready? Let's read. Until then, there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So, above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. The, the scripture says, above all else. Look at someone, tell them, above all else. Tell them, do you understand? Tell them, it's above all else. Above everything else is love. Amen? We, we're clear. All right. We're gonna, so, Hudson Church, we've learned from last week, the last session, that God is love. Amen? Not that God loves us, which he does, but that God is love. He is the essence of love. He is the energy uh, that's love. He is the force that's love. And love is the greatest force that exists on planet Earth. And God is love. And if we are children of God, if God is in us, then that love is in us already in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Then we also learned last week that God loves us unconditionally. Amen. Look at someone. Let, I want to say that word unconditionally. unconditionally. We normally love how? Conditionally. You clean your room, I love you. You don't clean your room, I don't love you anymore. Okay? You provide the rent, you pay the rent, I love you. You don't have money to pay the rent, get out of here. I don't love you anymore. You follow me? So we love conditionally. God loves us unconditionally, and we have to learn how to love God's way in Jesus' name. And this love is called agape love. I want you to pronounce that word. Everybody say it together, please. Say agape love. You that are watching, say agape love. And look at someone and tell them, I love you with the agape love of God. I love you with the agape love of God. Amen? Amen? Did you mean that? You bunch of little liars, some of you. <laughs> okay, okay, we're going to see uh, the agape type of love. So now, we, we started the series last week, right? And people, you know, it, it takes, a, I, I need a couple of sessions because love is so big and so important for us to build on it and for us to learn. But we have a chance on the Tuesday night sessions to ask people ask questions or make comments on the lesson. And right away when I finished the lesson, someone came up and they said, oh, but in order to love God, you know, it's impossible to love God, I, I mean to love people the way God loves us. And God will never tell you to do something that is impossible. Amen. If God tells you to do something, it is because he will equip you to do it. And God is not asking us to do it. He is commanding us to love like he loves us in Jesus' name. Look at someone and say the word, it is a command, yeah. not a request, that you love me. Look at the set of, <laughs> amen? It's not a, please love me. No, no, no. It is a command that we have to love each other. So the Holy Spirit said, you got to give it to them different versions so that they can see it. So I have six different scriptures 
for us to confirm this. So after you see this this evening and you still don't want to do it, there's no more excuse for you because you're going to see it from the scriptures. Let's start this evening, John 15, 12. Let's all read. Ready? Let's all read. Ready? This is what? My request? This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Is that clear enough? But sometimes our heads are not screwed on straight, so let's get another scripture. John 15, I'm sorry, John 13, 34. A new, let's all read, it's got to come out of your spirits, everybody, ready? A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Is that clear? Verse 35. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Don't tell people that you're a Christian. Demonstrate to people that you're a Christian. You don't need a tattoo that says you're a Christian. You don't need to have scriptures on you. You don't need a t-shirt that says uh, you're a Christian. You don't need a bumper sticker. You need to demonstrate that you're a Christian by the love that you have for people in Jesus' name. Amen? Some of you are, yeah, 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 yeah. Get over yourselves, Hudson Church. This is a commandment. Amen? But just in case, John 15, 17. Let's all read. These things I command you that you love one another. These are not, I'm not repeating the same scriptures. These are different scriptures that I'm giving, all right? 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 from the Amplified. Let's all read together. But concerning brotherly love for all other Christians. Stop. Brotherly love for who? Do we know Christians that don't have a problem with other Christians? That don't love other Christians? That are against other Christians? And they think that they're doing okay. Folks, this is blocking your blessings. Uh, and God wants you to be able to flow in all the blessings. And Hudson Church, in 2022, we need to flow in our blessings to make a difference in Jesus' name. And don't let your love walk block your blessings in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all read. Let's go. But concerning brotherly love for all other Christians, you have no need to have anyone write you, for you yourselves have been personally taught by who? By God. How can you say that you know God and you don't love people? He says it by God, not by people, not by pastors. It says by, taught by God to love one another. So if you say that you have God in you, that you believe in Jesus, you got to have love because it's in you or else what are you confessing with your mouth? Amen? All right, I lost some there. 1 Peter 4, 8. Let's all read. And above what? All things have what? Fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Fervent love. You know what that means? A hot love. Do you remember when you, you first met, uh, when you were going out with someone? How was that love? Uh, you hang up, I hang up, we hang up at the same time on the phone, right? <laughs> right? Who did that? Who, who, who was that? Not me. Yeah. Then after a while, now, please, how many times are you going to call me? I already spoke to you ten times already. Please, I'm still here, I'm still alive, still my number, leave me alone. Okay? So fervent love. So what was fervent love with God? That you want to read the Bible, that it's not causing you to come to church. He said, man, I get to go to church, not that I have to come to church. I get to pray. I get to bless. I get to love my brothers and sisters in Jesus' name. Above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. And if you love someone, Hudson Church, your love will cover people. We'll put a blanket of covering them uh, on them in Jesus' name. I remember a few weeks ago, I forgot who it was, one of the ministers, I think it was Minister John, uh, where he shared about, um, it, it was Noah, and it, no, uh, Adam with his sons, no, uh, the two sons, that they covered his nakedness. It was Noah. It was Noah. So uh, they saw, the father got drunk, naked. How, how many people have, have, have had a little bit much to drink in, in their lives? Am I the only one? Okay. Have you had so much that you go drunk in the streets? <laughs> okay. So he was drunk, okay? 
and his son saw him, and one son saw him, and he goes back to the other one. Look at our father. Look at that joker over there. Look at him drunk on the street, right? And his other two sons, they went backwards with, with a cloth to cover their son, their father's nakedness because they didn't even want to see, and they covered the father's nakedness. That's love. When you're putting people's garbage and, 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 and sins out there in the street, that is not love. Okay, it says love will cover a multitude of sins. Some don't like it, argue with the scriptures. That's what the scripture says there uh, in Jesus' name. Amen? Now, praise the Lord on that. Give to me from the Amplified Version just in case. Ready? Above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins, forgives and disregards the offenses of others. Wow, man. If you really get that into your heart, man, you, you're on your way to dynamite uh, blessings, explosions in your lives in Jesus' name. Amen? You want to hold on to your old ways? Get ready for what's happening because now you have no excuse. You're getting through the scriptures, through the Holy Spirit. Now you know. Amen? 1 Thessalonians 3.12. Ready? And may the Lord make you what? Increase and abound in what? In love to one another and to all, just as we do to you. Verse 13. So that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. It's a heart matter, Hudson Church. And again, if you have not love for people, your heart is hard, and you need to deal with that hardness of heart uh, in Jesus' name. Amen? Verse 13. Uh, give it to me from the, right, I, I, I Amplified. Let's all read. Ready? And may the Lord make you to increase and excel and overflow in love for one another and for all people, just as we also do for you. Verse 13. Please, 13 Amplified. Ready? So that he may strengthen and confirm and establish your hearts faultlessly pure and unblameable in holiness in the sight of our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, with all his saints. Who's that? the holy and glorified people of God. Amen. So be it. Amen? So Hudson Church, we just read to love one another in six different scriptures. God is crystal clear on this command, not suggestion, command. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. Good. So I'm all applauding. You should applaud, man. Get this out of your system in Jesus' name. Amen? So let me ask you a question. So why do we have a hard time obeying this? Why do we fight against, rebel, argue, try and reason? But God, you don't know what they did to me. But God, you don't know. Uh, and come up with excuses instead of obeying his commands. Hudson Church, we need to stop with the excuses, with the rebelliousness, and just obey this command in Jesus' name. Amen? My brothers and sisters, not loving each other is the second greatest sin that we can commit. Not loving each other is the second greatest sin. Matthew 22, 36. Let's confirm this. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? 37. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 38. This is the first and great commandment, 39. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbors as yourself. So the first commandment that we all have is, and that we can break, is not accepting Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. If we don't accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, we will not be born again. We will not be saved. We will not have to, uh, the right to spend eternal life in heaven. You're going to have eternal life, but in hell, uh, and, and you're going to be tortured for in, in, uh, infinity. So that is the number one thing that we all as believers need to do is accept Jesus. And then the second one is that we can break is not loving other people as God has commanded us to love. 
Amen? So Hutchins Church, we must, and I get it, we must renew our minds in order to love like God commands us to. With our own mind, old mind, you will not do this. You need to renew your minds. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. Quickly, please. Let's read. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Look at someone and tell them, please, renew your minds. And tell them, just in case, tell them, just in case, you need to re renew your minds. Okay? You need to renew your minds watching, okay? Let's read it from the Amplified Version. Ready? Let's all read. Come on. Do not be conformed to this world, to this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind. What does that mean? By its new ideals and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the things which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight, for you, we need to renew our minds. We cannot think the way we used to think. We cannot think like mommy and daddy, grandma, pooba, whoever it was. We got to renew our minds and think the way God tells us to think in Jesus' mighty name. It's just a one-time event. This is a continual event. You got to be constantly renewing your mind because today is renewed and tomorrow you go back thinking that your old ways. So you have to be constantly renewing your mind in Jesus' name. That's why it's so important to come to Bible study to come to Sunday service, to read your Bible daily, to pray in the Holy Ghost if you have your spiritual prayer language, to, to fellowship with believers so you can be constantly renewing your minds in Jesus' name. Because all day long, the enemy is doing his best to get us to think back the way the world thinks through TV, social media, our jobs, wherever we, when we deal with the world system, it's to get us back to thinking their ways, and we have to be constantly renewing our minds in Jesus' name. Amen? So Hudson Church, uh, Holy Spirit wants us to understand this, that we must make a decision to love people no matter what. It's a decision. So when you wake up in the morning, you say, I'm going to love people no matter what in Jesus' name. And when you declare that, get ready to be tested. Probably before you leave your house, you're going to have a chance not to love somebody. In your house, a neighbor or someone, because if you make something, the devil will try and get you to back off of that. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. So look what the Bible says, such a church, as I was preparing for this lesson for tonight on love. If you love those who just love you, that means nothing to God. If you love those who love, love you, it means nothing. We're supposed to do that. Luke 6.32, Amplified. Look at this. Read. Let's read it. I want everybody to read together. Ready? If you merely love those who love you, what quality of credit and thanks is that to you? For even the very sinners love their lovers, those who love them. So you ain't doing nothing by loving the people that love you. I want you to say lie. Think of that. If you just love the people who love you, you're supposed to. When a father, tell, a husband, he loves his wife, you're supposed to love her. When a father says he loves his children, you, you want a pat on the back? You're supposed to be loving them. When the parents say, kids say, I love my parents, you're supposed to love them. You're not doing anything above and beyond. You're supposed to love them. 
Uh, it got quiet in Presbyterian church. Huh? Verse 33. Ready? And if you are kind and good and do favors to and benefit those who are kind and good and do favors to and benefit you, what quality of credit and thanks is that to you? For even the preeminently sinful do the same thing. Wow. Wow. This is important, Hudson Church, uh, that we have to step up our love game. Uh, the Bible teaches us in these last days that our love is going to grow cold. And we need to be constantly shaking up that love. If you have a fireplace, you know that you can start a fire with two logs, three logs, and it starts beautiful, but after a while it dies down. The same thing with our love walk. Uh, you have to stir it up. You got to move that wood. You got to add more wood to it because our love, because of the pressures of this world, will grow colder and colder. And we have to constantly be stirring it up uh, on a daily, hourly basis in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? As I shared with the men, uh, what's harder, to get married or to stay married? Stay married. Stay married. Okay? So, so remember, you gotta, you got to be working at it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Psalms 2.8. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Before I get there, take that off a second. I just want to make sure. We must ask God for help, and that's okay. If anybody here tonight has a problem with loving, God knows that you have a problem. And all you have to do is just, God, I need help in my love walk, and God will be faithful to help you tonight in Jesus' name. But don't be arrogant. Don't say I'm good to go when you know I need help in my love walk because I want to strangle people instead of loving people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ask for help. The Bible says that you have not because you ask not. So get off of your pride. Get off of your high horse. Say, God, I need help in this area of my life. And God will not judge you. He'll help you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So ask God for help, and he will help us in loving each other. And remember this, ask God. Besides asking for help, God, give me a loving heart. God, remove this heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh in me in Jesus' name. And I know some of us have been hit hard. Some of us have a hard heart because of experiences, uh, troubles, pains that other people have caused us to, to suffer. But God knows that, and God will replace that hard heart and give you a soft, fleshy heart. But you got to ask him for that by faith in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Let's, now let's look at the scripture, Psalms 2.8. Ready? Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. One thing I ask God in the morning, God, send me people that I can love in Jesus' name. Bring people into my life that I can love in Jesus' name. Some of you say, God, I don't want to see nobody today. And I'll thank you if I see nobody today in Jesus' name. No. <laughs> ask God to give you people to love in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? So that's ask for the nations so that we can love people in Jesus' name. Amen? Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel who? 24, let's all read. For I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. God has brought us into our own land, Hudson Church, 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you. Isn't that good? Poof, clean water on you right now in Jesus' name. Amen? And you shall be what? Clean. We're cleaned already by the blood of Jesus, Hudson Church. Amen? I will cleanse you from what? from all your filthiness and from all your idols. How many here were filthy? How many of us had idols? And idols, anything you have above God, that, that, you, that had all your attention in regards to that. He will cleanse you from all our filthiness and from all your idols. Stop saying, I'm a good person. I never did nothing wrong. There's no one that's good except the Lord Jesus. We all were filthy, and we all need cleansing. Amen? Amen? All of us, not only me. Amen? Verse 26. I will give you what? A new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Some of us need a heart transplant, and that's okay. How many can be honest? Let's start whacking the devil now, right now. How many can say that you had a hard heart in your life? That you had a hard heart? Raise your hands if you had a hard heart. Okay, God will give you a soft heart. 
Uh, in Jesus, but now, what's the problem? Some of us, are, I, I don't want to so hard because I don't want to be hurt again. And, and that can happen, uh, okay? But, but you have to learn how to trust and walk in the ways of God, walk according to the Spirit, and God's protection will come. And I can't, I would be lying to you, I would say that hurt is not going to come your way because nobody can guarantee that. But take a chance again, trust in what the Lord says in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Trust in the Lord, Hudson Church. He will never for, forsake us or forgive us. So because the time is coming out, we need help from the Holy Spirit in order to love each other. We need help. But after getting a new heart, now you need the, the blood, you need the Holy Spirit to pump that heart and to help you do it. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, Amplified. 1 Peter chapter 1, 22, Amplified, please. Wait, let's all read. Since by your obedience to the truth, through the Holy Spirit, you have what? purified your hearts for the sincere affection of the brethren. See that you love one another fervently from Has anybody said to someone, I love you, but you're thinking about what they did wrong to you? Yeah, I love you. Yeah, I love you. But you're, you're playing in your record everything they did to you. That's not a pure heart, that's in church. You can fool that person, you can fool yourself, but you can't fool God. It's got to be from a pure heart. We need to let it go once and for all in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Luke 11, uh, let me just see because my time is going. Let's get down John 16, 13, please. Quickly, John 16, 13. Can I get a little bit more time, Hunter Church? Yeah. Can I get about three more hours? Yeah. No, because I don't have it, so don't worry about it, so I'm not going to give it to you. I, I, that means I don't love you guys, no. That means I got to go somewhere. Go. <laughs> Ready? Let's read. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. Talking about the Holy Spirit, Hudson Church. Verse 14. He will glorify me, for he will take up what is mine and declare it to you. Verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what of mine and declare it to you. Romans 5.5. 5. Love is being poured into our hearts right now by faith in Jesus. Do you receive it? Let's all read. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has, has been what? Poured out in our hearts by who? By the Holy Spirit who was given to us. You cannot say you have the Holy Spirit and you, and you don't have love. That does not compute. That does not go together. That is a lie. Uh, if you have the Holy Spirit, you must have love because it says it, that it has been poured into our lives by faith in Jesus' name. Amen? And lastly, uh, for tonight, give me 2 Peter 1.7. And we're done for tonight. 2 Peter 1.7. Amplified. Ready? Let's read. And in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection. And in exercising brotherly affection, develop Christian life. This is a process that we have to develop it, work it, develop it, work it. If you mess up tonight, just repent and get back in loving people in Jesus' mighty name. Did we learn something? Can we get a round of applause from God?